Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is really good to be back. Um, second show of the day, we did the one earlier on pay-per-view buys and uh, the pay-per-view model. Uh, please check that out. We got contrasting, conflicting numbers um, in regards to what the Tank Davis pay-per-view did. Very, very conflicting numbers. Um, but uh, we're going to get to today's show. We're going to get into uh, Edgar Berlanger and the top-ranked divorce. Um, before, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, sometimes twice a day, like today. Um, also, uh, follow the other side of Texas Boxing Scene, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Um, all right, let's get into, oh, uh, all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery, so it's near and dear to our heart. Let's get into um, today's topic. Edgar, the chosen one, the monster, Edgar Berlanger. Um, is splitting. Um, according to the boxing scene, um, Keith Connolly, who is the manager of Belanger, um, and representatives for Top Rank reached a separation agreement uh, Wednesday morning, following several months of talks about how to proceed with Belanger's career um, this year. Brooklyn's uh, Belanger has not fought since June 11th, so it's been seven months or so. Uh, in large part because of the New York State Athletic Commission spent. Uh, Belanger for biting. Uh, remember, he, he, he was uh, quite biting. <laughs> Bite Langer. Um, you know, he's a promotional free agent now, and I, I, I think he stays that way. You know, it's interesting. You know, Top Rank is invested in New York. Um, you know, they, they use the garden a lot. Um, my guess is, I, I, I really don't know. You know, PBC makes a bit of sense for Belanger. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Um, you you look at what he's done now since the Demond Nicholson win um, back in which was April of 2021. So he's had three fights since then: one more 2021 and two in 2022. Um, you remember the knockout streak ended in at the T-Mobile <clears throat> um, against a, a, a guy named Marcelo Esteban Corses. Um, it went 10 rounds, and uh, Berlinger probably lost that fight. All three judges scored at 96-93 in his favor, but he probably lost that fight. Um, he won something called the WBO, an WBO NABO Super Middleweight uh, vacant title. Um, he was dropped in that fight, if you remember, um, in the ninth round. Uh, then he fought Steve Rolls, which was, you know, Steve Rolls is what Steve Rolls is. And uh, Berlinger beat him. Wasn't the most impressive one, but it wasn't terrible either. Uh, but this is, you know, Steve Rolls is a guy that was stopped by Triple G in, uh, was it two or three? For his four rounds. Um, he beat Christopher Booker. Um, I mean, there's really not much. He just beat Shady Gamore, which is a decent win. But, I mean, these are the type of guys he, he fights. Um, and, and he fought a competitive fight with Berlanger, which Berlanger clearly won. And then Berlanger beat Angulo, which I thought was a, a pretty decent performance. Uh, but if you remember, Berlanger was biting in that fight. Remember with the with the biting. Uh, <laughs> and he's been basically suspended since. Uh, well, he has, you know, I, I guess suspension over now. And, you know, there was debate on what they were going to do with him. They're not going to do anything with him. You know why? Because he's not good. He was a hype job that I never bought into. You can go back and listen to the MCR podcast. I was never in. I I, I never saw anything special in Berlanger at any point whatsoever. Um, you know he can hit and he's big and he's strong, but I never saw a future world champion in him. You know, they had hyped him up so big over there at top rank. You know they were calling him you know the next great guy, the next big thing. He's going to break the first round, not first round knockout streak. Um, you know, he was gonna. He, he was so good. He was gonna fight Canelo. It's like, come on, come on, guys. There's nothing he can hit. He can hit. You know, he he had Andre Rozier, which I thought was the right guy for him. You know, top rank really, really pushed him. They were trying to make him the next Puerto Rican superstar, and he's just not it. You know, like Edgar Belanger and top rank split, so Belanger's a promotional free agent, and he's probably gonna stay that way. Um, he's just not that good. Um. I don't know if Eddie Hearn's going to look at him. I don't know if, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Your PBC, they, they got some super middle. Would they be interested in him? You know, I, I don't know, right? 
Uh, and then Golden Boy, you know, um, they're not really heavily invested in super middleweights. You know, they got Munguia at 160, which I, that could be a fun fight. The Mexican-Puerto Rican rivalry, uh, if, if Munguia could go up to 68. Um, but I, I just – I don't see much of in, in the way of, of, of options for Belanger because he's not that good, right? Like, so you want to sell the garden with him. Um, I, I guess PBC would try the Barkley Center. If they, I mean, he's just he's not that good, and it, you know you could put him in with Anthony Durrell, I guess and I, I, he probably loses. You guys think Berlanger beats Anthony Durrell? You could you could start putting him in with some old aged out guys and try to get him on a, on a winning streak. You know, not that he's lost, but just you know rebuild him like that. But once you step him up, like, can he beat Plant? No. Can he beat Benavides? No. Can he beat, you know, I, can he beat the can he beat Zach Park? No. He can't beat any of these guys, right? Uh, can he beat Andre? No. Right? So, what's the, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can bring him in. He's not going to get paid big money, which he was. It doesn't make any sense why he would want, it was an amicable split. Where's he getting a better deal than what he had with Top Rank? Top Rank pushed him and hyped him and built him up from from, from nothing for no reason. It's because they liked him. He got a bunch of first round knockouts. Um, now he's got four straight UD victories. You know, and I, we, he is what he is. Like he's twenty five. He's not old. He's still young, but he's not really improved in any facet of the sport, right? And he's not that good. And you know, he's not going to beat top ten guys. He's going to lose to all of them. Once he does that, his hype is gone. So, I, I mean, if anyone signs Berlanga, it's, it's you know, like signing, like, John Wall, right? Like, hopefully he can give me something. Like, obviously he's not a star anymore, right? John Wall's been injured so much, you know. But not that Berlanga's been injured. He's just not that good, right? So he's, you're not getting a superstar. You're getting a guy that's going to be used as an opponent. Right? I mean, unless you want to really, really match him up against, you know, you go through his resume. You go through Berlanga's resume, right? That that knockout streak, which was what? It was 16 straight first-round knockouts. Is that right? Demon Nicholson, Ulysses Sierra, Lenal Balls, Eric Moon, if you're from the South, you know Eric Moon, Cesar Nunez, Gregory Trinnell. Um, I'm not even going to try to say this name. Samir Dos Santos Barbosa, Gregory Clark, you know, and then we go into real obscure things. You have know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You hear, you know, non televised cards, you know, King's Theater in Brooklyn, different things like that. Um, but I mean, this, uh, he's fighting on Luda Bella cards. He, he wasn't what you thought he was going to be, right? And I mean, he wasn't what they tried to build him up to be. He's, he's not that dude. He's not a bad fighter. He's a good fighter. You know, he's a, he's a quality fighter. He's just not a world championship caliber fighter, which is what they were expecting. Um, so now bite linger. Um, I, you know, we'll see where he goes. Do you think any of the majors pick him up? You know, maybe he goes with the Bella, you know, but the Bella really hasn't been able to deliver his guys big fights recently. Um, you know, it, it, it's tough because, like I said, he's not that good. You get a headline cards with him. If you headline him against other good fighters, he loses. If you headline him against, you know, Eric Moons of the world, who's I, who cares? Right? He's 25 already. He's got, you know, 20 fights. It's just he's past that point. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing on all forms of social media. Uh, quick hits comes at you every day. Uh, up to, uh, eight to ten minutes a day. Um, I'm losing my brain. Texas Boxing Scene. Please follow Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's the other channel. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is. It's already January twentieth, twenty twenty three. Uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. Three Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.